he went on and then at the end of his life he again penanced and got the grace of indra and renewed to 300 more years again it happened so thrice it happened then indra took him to three mountains and picked up three morsels of sand and told this much i have learned and that is remaining so anantavai vedah when that be the case it is very hard for us to exhaust and that's why it is something like uh, we have andhaga janyaya in sanskrit a maximum which says maximum blind people going to elephant and trying to feel and comprehend the whole body of the elephant it is very difficult so it will happen but it should not happen andhenaiva niyamana etandah i will assure you it's not blind leading the other blind in that sense we have some of the interesting sessions which are catering to different people for example some people are interested in the art of veda some people are interested in the science of veda some people are interested in the etymological features of veda some people are interested in the agamic aspects of veda and some people are interested in the relations between puranas and the vedas agamas and the vedas itihasas and the vedas and to all people as we know natyam bhinna ruchir janasya bhudap ekam samaradhanam so says the kavikulu guru kalidasa our national poet vedas uh, vedaha bhinna ruche ruchibhya janebhya samesham sarvesham samaradhanam like that veda will entertain all people because it is our aspirations it is the codification of the aspirations and achievements of our rishis and rishis are eternal in that sense it is not bound by the frame of space and time and we have interesting sessions where the misnomers regarding vedas who has to say who has to read who should not all this do's and don'ts are being prescribed long ago but to what extent they are valid how is it so if so any such written document available in veda if not we should pursue that why can't we have the veda in all these senses we are going to have deliberations and discussions and people are invited to participate as per the limited schedules of course we know kala is the ultimate thing krishna in the bhagavad gita says kala kalaita maham i am the ultimate counter and so when he is counting down none can stop when that being the case we have to adhere to kala purusha we should not avoid the kala prakriya then we have uh, some scholars who are very eminent we have to be respected as a token of our gratitude and such scholars will be honored at the end so it will be very colorful and interesting session we know vade vade jayate tattva bodha it is also said vade vade jayate tattva nashah it should not happen it will be tattva bodha thank you thank you dr ganesh for this uh, introduction to the eight day conference it's now time for us as part of our tradition to honor the respected invitees i now invite shri n ramanuja chairman bharati vidyabhavan bangalore to honor the governor of karnataka dr h r bharadwaj i now request i now request shri hr anand vice chairman bank bharti jabavan bangalore to honor professor v kannan dibhi bhaga iti dibhi bhaga ide kasta jedam kasta jedam ide te kasta jedam bhava kasta jedam ide te kasta jedam bhava krishna jedam bhava kasta jedam krishna jedam bhadhu dati dhuva java kasta jedam kasta jedam bhadhu dati i now request shri h n suresh director bharti jabavan to honor shri madhu pandit das ji 
Thank you very much. As a prelude to the keynote address to be delivered at this conference by Professor V. Kannan, ex Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Hyderabad, it is appropriate for me to remind ourselves the Shanti Mantra enshrined in the Upanishads, exhorting every one of us to live in harmony with all the stakeholders, namely amongst ourselves and with nature and thereby promoting universal peace. Prithivi Shantarakshagam Shantir Dau Shantir Disha Shantir Ravantaras Disha Shantir Agni Shantir Vayo Shantir Aditya Shantir Chandrama Shantir Nakshatrani Shantir Rapa Shantir Roshalaya Shantir Vanaspate Shantir 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 Vamsa Shantir Kushma Shantir Brahmana Shantir Shantir Eva Shantir Shantir Mehasto Shantir I now request Professor V. Kannan, ex Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Hyderabad, to deliver the keynote address. Eminent scholars assembled here, Veda Bhimanis, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have assembled here for a unique event called Veda Samvada. This is organized by two renowned institutions, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan and ISKCON. I deem it a honor to have been invited to share with you some of my admiration for the glory of Vedas. What are Vedas? The Vedas are the oldest available books in the history of mankind. Dr. Annie Besant is correct when she says that the Vaidika Dharma is the oldest of living religions. Will Durant, the American historian, is correct when he writes that the Upanishads are the oldest extant philosophy and psychology of the human race. What is the age of Vedas? Who wrote them? The traditional view is that Vedas are eternal, Shashvatam. Manusmriti says, Anadi Nidhana Shesha Vagutsrishta Svayam Bhuva. Vedic passages have neither a beginning time nor an ending time. They emerged from the God of creation. Upanishad itself says, Yo Brahmanam Vidadhati Purvam Yo Vai Vedamscha Prahinoti Tasmai As soon as the God created the Creator, the very first thing He did is He imparted Vedas to the Creator. The researcher's view, the foreign scholar's view is only slightly different. Everyone agrees that the Veda is the oldest book of the world. They use such phrases as earliest stages of thought, most ancient records, first heavenly book from the primordial past, first book of the mankind, and so on. There are, these are probably Vedas are probably the only ancient books that have remained intact, untampered, in the purely original form. The internal evidences unambiguously indicate that the Vedic rituals have been in vogue 
फॉर हंड्रेड थाउजंड इयर्स शतम वर्ष सहस्राणी दीक्षिता सत्रमा सता वेदास हैव बीन इन यूज फॉर द पास्ट वन लाख इयर्स एंड मोर सो से द वेदास देमसेल्फ इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस अनटैम्पर्ड प्रिजर्वेशन ऑफ वेदास दैट डेविड फ्रॉली एंड अदर्स असर्ट दैट वेदास आर द मोस्ट रिलायबल डॉक्यूमेंट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड द हिस्टरी ऑफ द एंशियंट वर्ल्ड these revelations are of undecidable age with the estimate of scholars ranging from 1200 bc to several millions bc several researchers assign several dates max muller says 1200 bc keith and macdonald say 2000 bc wilson says 4000 bc lokamanya balak gangadhar tilak Says six thousand, and the Nobel laureate says it is seventy lakhs BC. Why do they differ so much in their conclusions? A. B. Keith gives up his gives up his further research on the age of Vedas after declaring that the determination of the age of Samhitas will most probably remain as a mere conjecture. McDonald admits at the end that the age of composition of suktas put forward by him is merely a guesswork. Khajki clearly writes that the age of Rigveda cannot be accurately determined by either linguistic tools or by literary data. Max Muller confesses that no power on earth can determine the age of the Vedas. These researchers diverge in their proposals about the date of vedas but there is one point on which they converge all of them agree on the undecidability of the date of vedas these have been amazingly preserved by oral tradition i am quoting now from a book of graham hancock who has investigated mysteries of the histories what is the most amazing about these hymnodies vedic passages is not so much their overall length which is awesome but that for most of their history it is probable that no written versions of them ever existed and not because they could not be written down but because the priests of the vedic religion believed that they should not be written down but should be kept alive instead in human memory vedanam lekhaka yesyu te vai nirayagaminah whoever writes vedas will go to hell this is what rishis have pronounced these are the only books whose sounds are regarded as as important as their meanings markandeya smriti prohibits even slightest variations in the recension of vedas padasya varna matrasya va vakyasya swarasya va vyatyaso yatra kutrapi tatra atyantam jagarukah we are advised to be very alert so that even a single letter or its swara is not changed now i quote an excerpt from the book hymns from the rigveda by dr jean me lee of france the pyramids have been eroded by the desert wind the marble broken by earthquakes the gold stolen by robbers while the veda is recited daily by an unbroken chain of generations Veda is traveling like a great wave through the living substance of the mind traveling from generation to generation Vedas and Vedangas contain not only rudiments but also some fairly advanced treatment of modern science the Hindu revelation is in complete harmony with modern science writes Jacolliat from france 
the example that he gives is about the process of creation of the universe. In Vedas it says that it is created gradually, step by step, by evolution. Electricity, radium, electronics, airship are all known to the seers who founded the Vedas, writes Ella Wheeler Wilcox, a woman journalist of America. Rig Veda asserted that gravitation held the universe together. Vedic Aryans asserted that the earth was round and circled the sun. The Indians of the 5th century AD calculated the age of the earth as 4.3 billion years. In his book on the ancient roots of modern science, Dick Terasi goes on listing the scientific achievements of the Vedic civilization. Vedas admit many hidden meanings. Tirathatam shruti shuvitta dasartham This is what Madhvacharya says. All Vedic passages have meanings in three different layers. The one on the outer layer is what we immediately understand. Even foreign scholars agree that Vedic passages should have concealed meanings. Solange Lemaitre in his book on Hinduism writes, there is more than a purely literal meaning found in the Vedas. Vedas are valuable thus far, their antiquity, their unadulterated purity, their amazing oral passage to posterity, their undecidable age, their mesmerizing melody, their scientific contents, their hidden meanings, their divinity, their universality, and many other features that distinguish Vedic literature from the rest. In the coming eight days, we are going to enjoy through these and many other glories of Vedas. Thank you. Very illuminating keynote address, which has set the tone for the discussions over the next eight days. Before we go to the next item of the program, we deem it appropriate to also honor Bhandagadde Narayana Bhatta, the Vedic scholar who has led the Vedic chantings. I request Sri Narayana Bhatta to kindly come on the stage and accept our humble honor. Vedaja Supatha Raja Asmane Vishwani Deva Bajunani Vidwane Yujodhyasmajjoho Rana Benaha Bhojasthante Nama Uktim Vidhema That he chose to lay the philosophical foundation for the Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, his dream child, on the Rigvedic edict, Ano Badraha Krutavo Yantu Vishwataha, let noble thoughts come to us from every side. He sought to put the Bhavan on the high pedestal of the concept of Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, giving preeminent position to knowledge, Amrutam to Vidya. I now request. Shri Madhu Pandit Das Ji to address the gathering. Hare Krishna. O Magnana Timaranda Sagyan and Jana Shalake, a Chakshur and Militam Jena Tasma, Shri Gurave Namaha. Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtai, Bhutaleshi Mate, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> His Excellency H.R. Bharadwaji Respected Vedic scholars, Vedic followers, admirers and devotees of Bharati Vidya Bhavan as well as ISKCON. ISKCON or International Society for Krishna Consciousness is extremely happy to have been given an opportunity to host this Vedic conference in this temple premises conceived by Bharati Vidya Bhavan Bangalore. Nothing is as auspicious as this location where Lord Krishna resides. Lord Krishna himself says in Bhagavad Gita, 
वेदेश्च सर्वैरहम वेव वेद्यो वेदांत कृत वेद विद्येव चा बाय द वेदास आई एम टू बी नोन आई एम द कंपाइलर ऑफ वेदांता एंड आई एम द नोवर ऑफ द वेदास एज सून एज आवर डियर फ्रेंड श्री के जी राघवन मोटेड दिस आइडिया आई ग्रैब दिस ऑपर्चुनिटी on this occasion i'd like to talk about krishna and the vedas iskon acharya bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupada the greatest exponent of krishna consciousness in a short span of 11 years from 1966 to 77 spread, spread the message of bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavat purana and the sankirtana of the hare krishna mahamantra all over the world and starting from the west Shila Prabhupada was asked why he was successful in converting so many people to Hinduism to which Shila Prabhupada replied we convert atheist class of men to take to god consciousness god is one it is not the question of christianity hindu or muslim any religion that teaches to love god is genuine it has nothing to do with hinduism mohammedanism etc thus he succeeded because he presented krishna not as a sectarian god of hindus but as parabrahman the absolute truth <laughs> shila prabhupad came in the tradition of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu the 15th century saint and incarnation of lord krishna shri chaitanya mahaprabhu was the founder of the philosophy of achintya bheda abhede tattva his con teaches that absolute truth or god is simultaneously a transcendental limitless person parabrahman and impersonal brahman as revealed in the vedas upanishads and puranas it is for the first time that a presentation of vedic knowledge with emphasis on the personal aspect of parabrahman or bhagavan was made all over the world through the empowered work of shila prabhupada krishna is presented all over the world by shila prabhupada as that transcendental personality who is the cause of all causes sarva karana karanam not the limited person of flesh and blood but the kind of person described in shweta shwatara upanishad that absolute truth has no material legs and hands but has spiritual hands with which he accepts everything offered to him and also similarly bhagwan has no material eyes but he does have spiritual eyes that sees all although he has no material ears he hears all possessing all perfect material senses he knows present past and future again krishna is not a limited person of flesh and blood but who is described in the katha upanishad as nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadhati kama the supreme personality of godhead is a maintainer of innumerable entities in terms of their different situations according to individual work and reaction cautioning us against extending material conception of limited person of this world to krishna he himself reveals in bhagavad gita that he is not a person of flesh and blood subject to birth death old age as ordinary mortals avajan avajananti maam muda manush tanum ashitam only the fools regard me as an ordinary person he also declared that janma karma chame divyam evam yo viti tattvatah tektva deham punar janma niti maam eti sor O Arjuna, one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities, does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode. O Arjuna, such is the power of true understanding of absolute truth, as a non-material, yet a person, but one who is the cause of all causes and maintaining the creation. The Rig Veda, which are hymns in praise of devatas. and they all end with the word om tat sat om rigveda also states om tat vishnu paramam padam sada pashyanti surya meaning the devatas are always looking at the supreme abode of vishnu in the bhagavad gita also krishna says om tat sat iti nirdesho brahmanas tri vidah smritah brahmanas tena vedascha yajnascha vihitah pura from the beginning of creation the three words om tat sat were used to indicate the supreme absolute truth these three symbolic representations were used by brahmanas while chanting the hymns of the vedas 
and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. The Vedas are the manual of the universe. All, of the, all scientific knowledge of the world is contained in them. While being so, Lord Krishna also reminded that Vedas are mainly meant to raise the life of a man to a transcendental level beyond material nature, which is the ultimate purpose of Vedas. Thus, the ultimate purpose of the Vedas are even beyond the Vedas. Men of scientific knowledge are very much attached. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also warns about giving uh, overemphasis to the material aspects of the Vedas. Kamatmatmana Svarga Para Janma Karma Phala Pradam Kriya Vishesha Bahulam Bhogaishwarya Gatim Prati. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets, result in good birth, power and so forth. Being desire of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there is nothing more than this. Vyasadeva, who compiled all the Vedic literatures, found himself in a state of lack of complete satisfaction. Then his guru Narada came to him and directed him to compose a work in direct praise of Vishnu or Krishna. This is the background in which Vyasadeva composed Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is described by Vyasadeva as a mature fruit of Vedic knowledge. Nigama kalpa taror galitham palam chuka mukhad amrut dhrava samyutam. Our expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Shukadeva Goswami. In this particular age, Srimad Bhagavata Purana and Srimad Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, these two, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, these two literatures, if one can get familiarized with and practice, one will achieve perfection in life. Srimad Bhagavatam, though it is a final literature that Vyasadeva wrote, containing the essence of all Vedic knowledge, still it contains a lot of material knowledge within that so that there is a development of faith in the rest of the matter that is given in Srimad Bhagavatam. In Srimad Bhagavatam, even though it was written, it was composed 5000 years back by Vyasadeva, there is a description of the subject of embryology. In those days, now there are so many different kinds of modern uh, observing instrument to find out what at what stages the heartbeat of the embryo starts, breathing starts, etc. Even as early as 5000 years back, it is recorded in Srimad Bhagavatam exactly which, how many days of, of the formation of the embryo, the heart starts beating, breathing, etc. And this is matching exactly with what we see in Gray's Anatomy of Modern Medical Science. How did they know all these things? They had the power of the intuition, power of the mental instruments by which they could actually see these things happening. Beyond that, Srimad Bhagavatam also gives a whole description of creation of this material world, which is taking into account the factor called consciousness. The modern science is trying to understand this material world with the missing element of consciousness. Whereas our Vedic understanding encompassed the all aspects of life, the consciousness, the senses and everything and Srimad Bhagavatam talks of the creation of this material world, not only in terms of Panchabhuta, it talks about, talks in terms of five elements, then Manas, Buddhi, Ahankara, all the senses, the, the factor called time and finally the factor called consciousness. Today, the physicists are bewildered when they go deeper and deeper into the study of matter. In 1963, Nobel laureate Eugene Wigner, he said, physicists have found it impossible to give a satisfactory description of atomic phenomena without referring to consciousness. 
the specific the special characteristic of modern science is that consciousness is not considered as an element consciousness is simply considered to be a product of matter only matter is believed to be existing in that spirit when they went deeper and deeper into matter they entered a roadblock the heisenberg uncertainty principle where the observer made an impact on the measurement this was unknown to science it completely bewildered the entire world of physics and till today they have not resolved it and in other words they are realizing that the world cannot be understood without understanding the observer or the consciousness consciousness could not be factored till today and the scientists today are trying to see how through mathematics advanced mathematics consciousness could be factored the same physicist eugen wigner has shown that the probability of existence of self duplicating unit is zero that means could creation could life just come out of chemicals he has said since the ability to reproduce is one of fundamental characteristics of all living organisms wigner concludes that our present understanding of physics and chemistry does not enable us to explain the phenomena of life herbert yoki has demonstrated by information theory that even a single information molecule such as cytochrome c what to speak of complex organisms could not have arisen by chance in the estimated lifetime of earth and he says one must conclude that contrary to the established and current wisdom a scenario describing genesis of life on earth by chance and natural causes cannot be accepted on the basis of facts in the last two centuries after the western invasion our vedic knowledge has been taken to the west and translated and quite often used out of context for instance the knowledge of kama sutra was first translated by british explorer richard francis burton contrary to the current belief the actual purpose of kama sutra is one of self control for example kama sutra begins with the prohibitions of sexual relations in the three out of the four ashramas namely brahmachari vanaprastha and sanyasi therefore kama sutra is not to propagate illicit sex but meant to control and manage sex urge for procreation in grahastha ashrama today the western mind has painted india's culture as one of allowing unrestricted sex indulgence misunderstood this book inspired free sex age in the west now the same is moving to india due to the globalization of western culture in shrimad bhagavatam you will find relativity of time described freely how one day of demigods is one year for us how brahma's one day is 4.32 million earthly years it is only in the beginning of 20th century modern science discovered the relativity of time albert einstein stated we owe a lot to indians who taught us how to count without which no worthwhile scientific discovery could have been made mark twain said india is a cradle of human race the birthplace of human speech the mother of history the grandmother of legend the great grandmother of tradition our most valuable and most constructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in india only the french scholar romain roland wrote if there is one place on the face of the earth where all dreams of living men have found a home from the very earliest days when man began the dream of existence it is india the glories of vedic material knowledge are unlimited to describe the next few days we have assembled here to churn this knowledge not only material knowledge but also the essence of vedas or the essence of vedic knowledge the transcendental knowledge the knowledge beyond the senses beyond this material knowledge on this occasion i would like to quote a particular verse from kali uh, santarna upanishad in order to invoke uh, auspiciousness of the lord for the success of this vedic conference it is said 
that the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is specifically mentioned in many Upanishads, such as Kali Santarna Upanishad. Kali Santarna Upanishad says, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Iti Shodashaka Nam Nam, Kali Kalmasha Nashanam, Natro Paratro Upaya, Sarva Vedeshu Drishyate. It means after searching through all the Vedic literature, one cannot find a method of religion more sublime for this age than chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So on this auspicious day, let us all invoke the blessings of Lord Krishna. Attaining Him is the goal of all Vedas. Let us chant the Mahamantra three times. Please join me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madhu Pandit Das Ji, for this very elucidating address. We now come to the important aspect of this program, namely an address by the Governor of Karnataka. To deliver the inaugural address for this conference, we have amidst us Dr. H. R. Bharadwaj, Honorable Governor of Karnataka. Dr. Bharadwaj independent of his position he occupies today, has been a successful lawyer, an able administrator, and above all, has personal commitment to the concept of universal religion. He believes that all faiths ultimately lead one towards the same destination, namely the all-pervading, non-dual supreme power and placing us in the eternal orbit of Ananda Stiti, of truth, non-violence, tolerance, love and compassion. He is the author of a meaningful book titled India, a Fellowship of Faith. To Dr. Bharadwaj, there can be no religion that preaches falsehood, violence and hatred among fellow beings. In his view, the Vedas declare the principles of all religions as pious because they endow spiritual strength to the society. The Vedas, to him, explain the indivisibility of the Supreme Being who is kind and benevolent to all mankind despite geographical divisions created by human beings. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam is a foundation statement of the Vedas. We all look forward to hear from him directly on this subject. Dr. H.R. Bharadwaj, Governor.